Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to facelift your Forerunner from looking like this to looking like this. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're working on my fourth gen Toyota 4Runner. It actually does look pretty good, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a facelift to it. So we got the headlights from the 06 Plus. They have projectors and I like them a lot better. And then we got the filler pieces below them. Some Silver Star Ultras, you need H11 bulbs. The old headlights are H7, so we need adapters for the H11 bulbs. I actually ordered the bulb harnesses meant for these headlights that have the sockets that go in here, but they didn't come in in time. So I just ran to the junkyard and picked up these out of like a Camry or something. And then we got the taillights. These are the LED taillights out of the 06 to 09 Forerunners, and it just makes them look so much better. I've been wanting them for a while, so this is where it all started. It seriously changes the whole look of the vehicle. The 06 Plus grill covers a little bit of the hood. That's why the headlights have a little cutout. And the stock grills were so expensive that I just went ahead and went with this aftermarket grill. Real simple day. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna start with the taillights. Swapping the taillights on one of these is actually very easy. And there's two 10 millimeter nuts behind this panel. So grab a flathead, give it a little pry. All we gotta do is hit that 10 millimeter right there. And there's one more way up there. Once it's a little loose, it should just spin off by hand. And the lower one is easy to get to. As for the wiring, you just wanna push on this tab right here and unclip it. Then your tail light will just pop off like so. Now we wanna go ahead and remove the bulbs and swap them to the new housings. The new lights have LEDs, so there's no technical bulb, but we still need to swap this bulb holder over and pull the factory brake light out. The harness for the LEDs will clip right into it. Just push all the wiring in. Make sure to line up the metal contacts in the right orientation. Sometimes they can be a little stubborn, so grab yourself a set of pliers and nicely twist them in. Don't force anything, don't break it. On the bulb holder, there will be these metal contacts. You just wanna make sure to orient them the same so they line up with the contacts on the housing. It actually has arrows on the bulb holder that show you where it should point to a contact once it's pressed in. Now you're ready to install. Just make sure sometimes this uh, gasket comes off. Make sure it's pressed on all the way and around the bulbs. The tail light will just push in. Plug your taillight back in, put your panel cover back on, and you're done. Look at how much better that one looks than the old style. I hate those taillights so much better. freaking much better 
Since these are a factory update headlight, you don't have to get them from any aftermarket company in particular. It's just OEM replacements. So any replacement off Amazon or eBay from an 06 to an 09 Forerunner will fit on these. I'll go ahead and put links down below in the description of all the stuff I bought. These are just eBay OEM replacement headlights for an 06 to 09. These are just Silver Star Ultras from AutoZone. I'll go ahead and post a picture of uh, light comparisons for light bulbs right now that I found that's uh, very useful. So these are some of the best headlights on the market. You can see they're pretty high up on the chart. I'll go ahead and post a link for the grill as well. This is just off eBay. And it does come with these three lights that you can pop in here and wire up. Moving on to the front end, the first thing I wanna do is paint these bumper filler pieces. I didn't paint match. I just grabbed what I had on the shelf. So I got some uh, primer and some Rust-Oleum, silver and metallic. This is just a piece of Scotch-Brite. See how shiny it is? I'm gonna scuff it up so the paint will adhere to it. Now, if you don't do this, your paint will start peeling and chipping a lot sooner. If you don't have a piece of Scotch-Brite, grab an old dish sponge and that will work well enough for the purpose. This one's ready to take paint. Don't forget the edges, very important. Make sure to rag off any debris you have from the sanding process. And you know, if I was doing a really good job, I should hit these with oil and grease remover or oil and wax remover. I forget what it's called. We want to let it flash between coats, so we're, I'm going to go ahead and let these dry for uh, 10 minutes, and then I'll hit them with the silver. F it. Always burn your edges first, because the overspray will take care of most of the panel itself. Can we do your truck next? Paint it pink. Why not? <laughs> now, what, now is that a special color dad just silver? This is whatever I had on the shelf, bro. They actually turned out really good. Let's go ahead and tear apart the front end. Go ahead and pop the hood. And for the new grill, we will need to swap over this latch setup as well as the metal bar right down here. I'm gonna tackle the headlights first though. So let's get this trim piece off. A lot of my tabs are missing. They got busted when I was replacing the fan shroud because the fan, boom, ah. It's really easy to get these tabs out. Just grab a couple of flat heads, pry on each side. There's nine upper clips and then there's one on each headlight. Mine had four total. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the wheels to give myself better access. The headlights have four bolts. There are two up on top that are very easy to get to, one on the side, and then there's one on the side that is a pain to get to. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and pull this fender liner and get my hand back behind there. When you're reaching behind this plastic fender liner, you'll feel one bolt. It's the one in front of it. You'll feel one right above it. It's the lower one. If we look at the new headlight, we can see it's right down there on the side. 
Go ahead and pull this one bolt that holds the bumper to the fender liner. I'm hoping that will give me enough room. I just pull it back a little bit. You can see the plastic from the headlight. So the bolt is right over there. You kind of just got to feel for it. This is literally all by feel, but it's not actually that hard to find. With all the bolts off, you wanna pull up on these tabs and you might need your screwdriver. Sometimes they're a little stiff just to get them off the clips. Now there is a clip from your bumper filler piece to the fender. We're going to try not to break that. We need to reuse it on the new pieces. I'm going to go ahead and pull up on this thing till I can get the headlight out. Oh, and the, the clip has already disconnected itself. So as soon as I get this corner to clear, it should pop out. So I had to pull this up quite a bit and then wedge it down below the headlight. There's three wires for these headlights. Just go ahead and unplug them. And that's how easy it is to pull a headlight, nothing to it. I did sand and polish these headlights, but you can tell they're still a little bit yellow and you can really sense how much better these are going to look than this. Before we go any further, we need to talk wiring. There's some wiring differences on these headlights. The old style, we have three connections, your headlight, your high beams and a parking light. The new one we're going to put in has four connections. They move the turn signal from down here in the bumper up into the headlight, as well as the daytime running light feature from down there up here. I'm gonna go ahead and move the, all the wiring out of the bumper up to the headlight. The reason I'm going that route is I'm gonna be getting rid of this bumper and going with an off-road bumper. So all the wiring I can move out of the bumper is better. The fog light is gonna be the only wiring I leave down here. If you look up how to do this headlight swap online, a lot of people have conflicting opinions on what to do. I know of people just tapping the daytime running light and running both, but there's reports of the daytime running light module not being able to support that wattage. So if you do it that way, you're gonna need to run LED bulbs and then it's gonna hyper flash. So then you're gonna need to run resistors. So I'm just gonna steer all away from that, move all the wiring up like the 06 pluses do. And then that will put me on a better track for throwing away this bumper and putting a steel bumper. Tackling the headlight wiring is super easy. All we're gonna do is plug in our adapter. That's ready to go. High beam's ready to go. This is the junkyard parking light socket I got. The ones from the 03 will fit in there. I went ahead and test fitted it, but the bulb kind of hits the housing and is getting knocked to the side. So I think I need to go with this one. Now that the swap's done, the bulb socket actually showed up. Here's the part number if you want it. It looks like this is slightly longer than the ones I use, but shorter than the ones that came out of the 03 to 05. I don't think I'd spend the money on these as you can shave the DRL one and make it fit. I would just buy the smaller sockets to let this one plug in. Cause if you buy this, you don't have the other side that this connects to, so you're gonna pay 40 bucks per side just to chop it and use these pigtails. Not worth it in my opinion. However, the plug is different. So this is not gonna plug in unless I file off these alignment tabs right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a razor blade and knock them off. It's really not hard to do. Just shave it down with a razor blade. Just like that. Why you no go? I figured it out. The distance is closer on these. So they're holding the tab up. So it's actually these tabs that are causing an issue.
In hindsight, I don't think I needed to trim this backward. I don't think that was the issue. And it's a good idea to take just a small little cut on each one because you don't want to get too unstable and cut yourself. No more tabs, just the lock. Success. So that takes care of all three of these connections going to the new light. The next step is the daytime running light over here. I'm gonna see if these will fit in the new housing because this junkyard one from a Camry does not quite fit. Just like the junkyard one, we are having a little groove knot align right there. From what I can see, only that part needs to be trimmed and about half of it at most. So you guessed it, razor blade. Just a little cut at a time. And please wear gloves or something to protect your fingers. I've been cutting stuff for years with razor blades, so I'm pretty good at not cutting myself, but every now and then I do take a chunk out of myself and it's not fun. Let's see if that fits. Easy. I don't know why it's letting me twist it and it's not locking, but as long as it's tight, we're good to go. So I'm gonna leave it to where it's sealing that gasket. The OEM parking light bulbs are amber. The ones off the Camry are clear, but this one's burned out. I just grabbed a random bag of my LEDs, so I'm gonna be installing whatever these are into it and we'll see how it looks. That covers those two lights. I transferred over the high beam. All that's left are the headlights. These just twist in like your normal headlight. All the bulbs are ready to be connected. Of course, I did the wrong headlight, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that one ready to go and we'll move along to install. The last step is to put the new painted filler piece on, but we need to transfer this tab over. On the back of it, there is a release point that you wanna press with a screwdriver or a pick, and then it will pull out sideways. A little pick tends to work best for me. Just be careful not to break it, guys. We need to completely remove this filler piece as I need that yellow tab and the screw to mount the new one. The old style looks like it's more of a square hole. The new one's a circle hole. So I'm not actually too sure this is required. Pretty sure I'm gonna have to figure out something else for that. I'm gonna go ahead and just try a plastic push tab. For now, I can steal them from this radiator shroud. This is what we got for now, so I'm gonna use it. And this is the wrong, oh. Mm, yep, the wrong one. Is it? Am I stupid? How does this work? Oh, there you go, like that. This slides in to this on the headlight and clips like so. Then we'll put our push tab in the front and our little clip will snap in on this side. The final step prepping the car is this needs to be longer. It needs to plug in right up around here so we need to figure out how to extend this wiring. I don't actually want to cut and extend all of this so I'm gonna cut back this shielding and see if I can pull. If I can pull two inches that will give me four inches because it will pivot up to here and then I'll have this length from up here. You just wanna score the outside of the shielding and give it a place to rip. Don't go too deep or you cut some wires. I'm literally barely scoring it. And that is actually probably enough to make it, but it's gonna be a little tight. I'm gonna to try to peel back just a little more. That's definitely good enough right there. Going into this, I thought I was gonna have to do more wiring, so I brought butt connectors, a soldering gun, and a bunch of other stuff. But the way I'm making this happen is actually better for all of you because it's requiring nothing. Just cut a little shielding. It would be good to electrical tape this stuff back up. I'm not gonna, but it would be really good to wrap that up. So I think we're ready to put the headlight on. I'm actually just gonna plug in the headlight and do a wiring check on everything before. Headlight works. Bright works, turn signal's good. 
What about daytime running light? So there we go. Just move it up, get it out of the bumper. That's how the 06 pluses are. So I don't know why everyone's trying to overcomplicate this. This is my first time doing it. And the reason I'm doing more videos like this is there's so much stupid information going around on the internet. So that's all wired up. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that one in, get that one in, and then I'll shut the hood and show you guys how it looks before the grill because you can actually leave the old grill on the new headlights. It will just leave a little gap right here because the new grill cuts into the headlight a little bit more. Make sure to line up this tab for hooking in the fender. That is your biggest concern right now. Just like that. Oh, and it actually fits in better since it doesn't have the corner. I'm gonna go in and start with the hardest bolt to get. Just be patient with it guys, eventually you'll find the hole. If you have a lot of trouble, pull the bolt out and spit on it. Then go ahead and put the fender liner back in. I was reading online that people say the fourth bolt is optional. Just put the damn bolt in guys. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, come on. Look at that. Huh. So apparently I didn't line up something right over there. Let me go fix that. I figured out why everyone says the fourth bolt is optional. It's because these bumper brackets are different on the 06s plus, so this will push it too much forward. And it actually needs to be back here. I was wondering why this wasn't aligning quite right. So I'm gonna grab a drill bit and ram a hole in here, and that will line it up where it's supposed to be. Believe it or not, I couldn't actually find a drill bit. So it's kind of sharp. So I'm just gonna ram it with an impact till it goes through the headlight. Cause I'm ghetto. Please don't do this. Got it. I shut the hood before and it looked horrible. Let me try now. Much better. That was sticking out like a quarter inch. This is exactly what I wanted. That looks so good. This is old, let's get rid of that. And you can see just where the new grill is gonna come down. It kind of covers this body line. I'm gonna go ahead and get this side installed, guys, and we'll move on to the grill. Real time on that video, 10 minutes. Once I had everything ironed out, 10 minute install. That looks so freaking unbelievable. So I'm kind of doing this video in stages because I know some of you won't want to do the whole package. So the easiest, tail lights. Next up, headlights. Third, we got grill. But you guys are okay leaving it like this. I was reading a lot of forums where people were just doing the headlights and leaving this gap right here. And I started all this because my V8 fourth gen hit a deer. And here I am doing all this just to learn because uh, there was a bunch of stuff missing. So this is really giving me a good sense, but I'm glad I can share my knowledge and simplify this thing for you guys so it's a real easy swap. 
Now I could do this all over again for a customer super quick. Also, I gotta say the color match is not horrible for an off the shelf Rust-Oleum. That's good enough for me. I definitely regret leaving it on that bubble wrap because it kind of got stuck to it. But whatever, it's all good. So let's move on to part three, the grill. To get this grill off, we got four nuts on each side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull these two 10 mils to leave the latch assembly hanging up here. It should just come right off. Look at all these good parts I got left to put on eBay. Genuine Toyota. That's really not gonna be fun to clean up. The new grill doesn't come with any of the studs, so I gotta transfer over all the studs. I also need to remove this metal bar that runs across the bottom. It supports the hood release. Oh. This bar is different for the older grills. It's pretty apparent the new ones are wider. And I worked with both the parts guys at Toyota. According to them, you cannot buy the grill support separate. If anybody knows where to get that piece, drop a comment, leave me the part number, and I can update the description with this for everyone's information. I'm gonna just ram a screw in it right there, get the center bolted, not worry about the rest. You guys are doing this with me. There's a learning curve here. I thought everything would swap over, but it won't. If I put one screw in it, it will be good enough for the hood release for now. There we go. I don't want to tighten it too much and crack the new grill. I got to screw the Toyota badge in. I don't know if it came with screws and I lost them or if it didn't come with screws, but I found some. I got the two end ones. Those are the only ones supporting it. I'll be able to get these two. I think I'm gonna have to leave the rest floating for now till I get a new metal support bar for down here. So it just is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt these four bolts on and we'll see what it looks like. So this rod is not long enough. So if you guys do do the grill swap, you're gonna need a bunch of the brackets from the newer grills. The ones from this don't fit. I'm gonna attempt to shut the hood really gingerly so I don't break any of the shit hanging. Looks like this needs to come off. Okay. That didn't sound good. Damn, there she is all done. Just kidding, it didn't work. We learned a lot though. The bumper is contacting it everywhere and pushing it out. I'm calling it a night, I'm going home, I'm coming back with some more tools, probably a Sawzall, maybe a jigsaw, maybe a cutting torch, maybe I'll just crush this car. I'm going after market steel bumper. We're gonna channel out this bumper and make this grill fit. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Update on the grill situation. I swung by Toyota and tried to get the correct lower support bar, as well as the hood release rod. They didn't have anything in stock. And they told me they can't get that lower support without ordering the grill. I guess it comes all as one. This is how it looks right now. Then if I pop the hood, it looks way better. First of all, I'm gonna get my yellow tape and cover the bumper. Then I'm gonna mark where it goes down right here. And that's gonna be where I cut it with the cutoff wheel. With it like that, it will probably be okay as the bumper will hold it from coming out. I prefer the thin tape so you can bend it around curves. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and split the difference between the grill and the headlight filler. And that's gonna be my cut mark. 
just going to bring my line straight out. And then I'll just try to eyeball straight down. You can get a card and just run a little gap so that you cut it a little back. And we can actually use this card across the whole thing. try to keep it consistent. I'm kind of not doing the best job, but it's okay because I'm going to throw this bumper away, but I do want it to look as good as I can for now. That is what we got going on. And if you look straight down with the grill, it's pretty much just lined up with the front. I might have sunk in a little bit too much right there compared to over here, so I'm gonna correct that. I went ahead and transferred the marks a little further up. I actually decided to pull the headlight housings so that I can get the grinder in there better. Right now, it's gonna be hard for me to cut in there. Much more room to cut these edges. Don't forget eye protection and hand protection. When you melt plastic with the grinder, it gets really hot and it will burn you really badly. Some ear protection would be a great idea as well. Don't touch it when it's hot, guys. This is why it's so important to wear gloves. There was a lot of webbing going down into the bumper, so I needed a longer blade like a sawzall to get to it. That's what it looks like after. I'm a little gapped in the center, but it's equally tight on the edges. So that's as good as it gets till the new bumper comes in. A quick summary of what you will need if you want this to be a bolt-on affair. You need an 06 plus bumper, 06 plus bumper brackets right here. They locate the fourth headlight hole in the correct spot and they're different out here for mounting the bumper. And that's about it. That will make it a bolt on affair. The fog lights I obviously have not tackled because I didn't get the newer bumper, but it really shouldn't be too difficult. Let's see what it looks like with the headlights back on it. That is done. That is how it's going to sit for now. It definitely is a little rough around here, but overall I'm very happy with this result. So this is where... <laughs> Sorry guys, I am so tired. Overall, I'm very happy with this result. So this is where we're gonna leave it. The grill is no longer being pushed out like a foot and a half. Just kind of looks like crap, but you know, all that will be resolved with a new bumper. From five feet away, you can't really tell. I really wanna stress the importance of uh, PPE, like safety glasses and gloves when you're cutting that. If you look at my neck, that's from a piece of the bumper, the molten plastic hitting me in the neck and it burned the crap out of me. If you're using a grinder like I was, they spray molten hot plastic absolutely everywhere. 
and it's really not fun when it gets on you and burns you. One of the last pieces of the puzzle is this hood latch. Here's a quick little update. These are the part numbers for the hood latches. The 10 number, the older number, is for the 03 to 05. The 35020 is for the new style latch. So that is what you need so you don't have to rig it with bolts like I did. I was gonna cut this rod and weld in some extra metal and extend it downward. However, the average person watching this probably doesn't have a welder. So I'm going with plan B. That way you guys can do it. I got longer bolts and spacers. This is not the ideal hardware I would use, but it's what's around. What seemed to be right was an M6 by 50 by one. And then I just stacked a bunch of nuts on them as spacers. Hold on. on this a little bit. So I had this one little washer and I'm just changing it over to the other side. And that should put my spacing right where I want it to not be pulling on the secondary. Kind of ghetto, not my finest work, but if you don't have a welder, it will get the job done. And it is a little high. It would be better to get it lower. Last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and wire up these LEDs. It comes with this awesome long harness. I'm gonna plug them in, feed the wire down here, run it through there, and then somehow get it up toward the battery or something. I don't know, I'm not a wiring guy. I'm just gonna shove it in here. We'll zip tie it for extra security. So now we're back to the wiring talk. When do we want these lights to turn on? I could wire them with the daytime running lights, but I want them on at night when the headlights are on. So I'm gonna wire them to the parking light. I'm gonna grab a multimeter, see which one of these is positive. I'll put the red to it and I'm just gonna ground the other one. All right, and our hot one is the green one. So we will tap into this green one. Instead of soldering and heat shrinking them, I'm just gonna cut them and butt connector them. I picked up this set off Amazon and it's really nice. They have heat shrink built in. These are really nice snap on crimpers. I've gotten a really good uh, $20 set from Home Depot but with a good set of crimpers like that, these things are good to go. These things come in so handy and I do prefer solder and heat shrink, but not every job requires it. And that's it for the positive. The negative, we got this very good grounding point right here for the factory ground. So I'll go ahead and strip this back a bunch and just loosen the bolt. Then twist your wire and wrap it around the bolt. I prefer doing it this way. Then you only have to cut one wire. And that is it, we are done with the wiring. So now I can put this back on. Of course, all my tabs are broken, so I'll just put them in later. These are junk. I might wire these up so they're also on with daytime running lights, but for now, I'm happy with that. I'm glad I found those little LEDs for the corners. I like that they're a little purple. I'm really happy with this result, guys. The car looks so much better than it did before. So that's it. Simple upgrade, thanks for watching, I appreciate it.
If this video helped you out, go ahead and drop a like. And I should tell you guys to subscribe, but it's your life. Live it. I don't give a f <laughs> To summarize my final thoughts, if you have an 03 to 05, definitely do the taillights. They're bolt in. They're easy. Then I personally would do the headlights as well. I would not do the grill. The grill is what made this a pain in the butt. That being said, if you have an aftermarket bumper or you're doing the whole front end swap with the newer bumper, I would do it. But if you're just going for headlights and taillights, that's the simplest recipe right there. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.